Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Monday, November 4th, 2019. Thanks for tuning into your morning edition of the Grand Solar Minimum News Update. Let's get right into it. Our space weather, solar wind speed sitting at 345.5 kilometers per second with a density of 5.8. Over the weekend, we did have a sunspot to talk about, a real one actually. Uh, if you guys look up at the equatorial region facing away from Earth, you'll see a sudden bright spot. And actually, let's see if we can just go ahead. I don't have an arrow on this one, do it. Yep, I do. Okay, so I'll point out. <clears throat> no, I don't. I was going to point out to you, but if you guys look at the, above the equator uh, as it's turning away from Earth, you'll see a sudden area just kind of burst. And that is the AR2751 sunspot. Now that wasn't the one that we uh, that we had that we had from uh, a couple days ago, and uh, that one quickly died away as well. Actually, it never even got numbered. It it pretty much was just it was pretty much just um, an area of concern, but it has never really formed any bigger than what it was, so it died off as a sunspot. So, but AR twenty seven fifty one was also short lived as well, as we do not have any sunspots at the moment to speak of. There are zero sunspots on the sun. That gives us now two hundred and twenty nine days without sunspots here in two thousand and nineteen. Our TCI is dropping once again, 4.30. We did have it over the 5.10 mark there for a brief time. Lots of solar wind bombarding Earth's magnetic field. However, things have calmed down. And, you know, uh, reading on spaceweather.com earlier this morning, and a lot of the talk right now is we don't even have any expected solar wind streams to come in the next week or so. So there's no coronal holes being predicted, no sunspots that we could see on the horizon. Uh, we're just going to be looking at a sun pretty much like this. Uh, no solar winds expected. So this next week, uh, I could we could really see some low solar wind speeds from our star here in the next several days. We're already at 345.5. Could we see them drop in the 290s and the 280s it just depends on how long we go without any kind of coronal hole action but right now NOAA and other space weather agencies are not forecasting any kind of solar wind or coronal holes in the near future all right let's take a look at our weather let's start with our friends across the pond in the UK we'll give our weather update over there real quick Today, heavy rain and strong winds continuing across eastern Scotland, moving into northern England later. Once fog patches clear, many places seeing showers today, locally heavy, particularly in the southwest, with some bright spells. Windy for a time in the far southwest. Now tonight, rain is persisting over eastern Scotland and northeast England, with showers around the coast of Wales and the southern England. Some low cloud and fog forming over the Midlands and East Anglia. Tuesday, Anglia. Anglia. Thank you. Mari's been there before, so she knows how these cities are pronounced. Thank you very much. County, uh, Tuesday, cloudy and cold for the east with showers, particularly in the southeast. Drier in the west, windy, particularly along the east coast of England, but easing from northwest later. And the outlook for Wednesday to Friday Cold, frosty, and foggy in the east at first. Cloudy and windy and wet weather spreading from the west, then blustery showers. Sunshine and scattered showers and wintry in the north on Friday. Let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS as far as we are looking for moisture here. Across Europe and the UK, there's that first system and more moisture coming in through November. I mean, really, France, all of UK, Scotland, uh, parts of Denmark also getting in on the rain action here. Spain, snow in the higher elevations. And just system after system, the 7th, then the 9th, and then on the 10th, more rain coming to the area. That's where we're starting to see a little bit chillier, uh, cold stuff at the northern parts of the UK. But... This pattern here in the Europe and UK models do not look like it's going to be much sunshine. Lots of rain to deal with here. Let's take a look at our temperature outlook for the next several days here across the pod. 
normal like fall weather but we're also starting to see a lot more blue and look at the constant blue in Norway freezing temperatures are not going away anytime soon across Norway and Sweden uh, across the Italy and the Alps also freezing temperatures setting up for what may be snow but we're seeing that blue and green mix in the UK and Scotland also parts of France and Germany and Denmark also getting in with that cold weather as well so very wet and blustery cold pattern on the way for Europe and the UK. Now, they're not experiencing the kind of cold that we are experiencing right now here in the US. So right now they've kind of they kind of have it a little easy. I think they're dealing with a little bit more rainfall, but as far as temperatures go, I feel like the United States might be a little bit worse off as far as cold goes right now. I know today the bulk of the country is looking at some pretty cold weather as well. Scattered snow showers across parts of Ontario and Ottawa as we look around the map here. Manitoba also have dealing with some snow showers in the southern part. Alberta as well. And then across the United States, you know, some light snow falling in Montana, Minnesota, and Nebraska right now also dealing with some rain. Let's take a look at our minimum temperature forecast for overnight tonight. And as you see, most of us will be in that blue to possibly dark blue. That's 30s and 40s for overnight lows. And our daytime highs for today, well, looking rather like fall in the first half, the top half of the country, I should say. Texas, Arizona, California, Southern California, and most of Florida will be in the 70s and 80s today. Some parts might even reach close to 90 near Miami. And this is the short-term outlook. Uh, through the northeast, Ohio Valley, Kentucky Valley. Uh, we will see showers and storms across the United States, but nothing severe at this time. So lots of frozen precip across the northern plains as we scoot into Tuesday, and that snow will become more widespread. And check this out. Here in the northeast, look, there's two cold fronts that we're dealing with here, guys. And this is kind of what the, um, the headline was talking about, three rounds of cold air. This is the first shot right here and the second one is behind it so this is the early week cold blast that we're going to have followed by a late week wednesday thursday friday cold round as well and now uh forecasters are suggesting and we also notice here too that the weather gets a little bit more crazier towards the end of the week as well this is for uh thursday of this week but also we are dealing with a potential decent snowstorm that is setting up across the Ohio Valley and going up through the Great Lakes. Now that is supposed to happen close to the end of the week, but this would be shot number three right here, as this is predicted to go even further south and bring even more colder air to the region. Amarillo, Texas, you're set up for temperatures in the for highs on Wednesday and Thursday, 30, mid 30s on Wednesday and low 40s on your Thursday. So lots of weather to talk about this week coming up. This is only taking us to Thursday. We'll take a look at our GFS update real quick. And then tonight we'll look at the 18Z as well. This is the 06Z version here for Monday. And pretty dry, pretty calm for the beginning part, for the most part. And then the line of uh, rain will develop across Ohio through the northeast, bringing in some light snow overnight into Wednesday night. And then that air gets, that cold air gets reinforced in the northeast. Uh, also parts of the upper Midwest and the northern plains and the Great Lakes. Cold air just kind of settling in for the bulk of the week. Second round of cold air coming here by November 7th. And that's where we see the possibility of some light snow across Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and other parts in the Northeast, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and parts of Maine. Meanwhile, it's raining in the South for Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. There's Friday by this weekend. So that system moves South and East. And just that's the third shot of cold air that is being predicted for this region of the United States. So two shots coming from here, and then the system kind of dips along Ohio, Kentucky area, and this is going to reinforce more cold air. Of course, we see more high pressure settling in, so that usually means drier air, but also colder air as well this time of year. And then we got a clip. Uh, we got a clipper system moving in 
over the weekend from Canada that might reach the northeast. And when it does, we're talking light snow, nothing major here. This is Monday, next weekend. Uh, possibility, though, right in this region right here, folks, we could see something kind of messy uh, from the Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, light snow into Ohio. And this thing kind of seems to get a little bit more intense as it picks up a little bit. And early next week, we could see some more snow to the northeast system. We'll have to keep our eyes on this one right now. This one actually looks like it might actually turn into a decent storm. So this system bring, is being brought in by a high pressure system out of the north. And it gets caught up in the jet here in the lower 48 and then proceeds to move east northeast on into the northeast by Tuesday, a week away from today, basically. And that could be our first messy winter storm for the northeast. Uh, we get a little appetizer at the end of this week. But I think it's a possibility to see a widespread three to five inches of snow by early next week, November 11th, November 12th in the northeast. After that system slides out, that cold air still hangs around and continues to bring in storm after storm. And it seems like we get more lake effect snow chances on Saturday, November 16th. So the snowfall in the northeast, your turn begins this weekend. Towards the end of the week, we will start to really feel that cold temperatures overnight. Uh, temperatures will be at freezing or below overnight for the next several days. So that's going to set up for this, these batches of light snow that are going to come through that can possibly have an impact as far as accumulation, just because we're going to have a week or more of solid temperatures below freezing. And while we're at the temperature topic, let's take a look over here in the next few days. United States cooling off nicely. And the northern part, we definitely have a lot more colder air to talk about than, say, parts of Europe. Uh, hardly any red or yellow showing up on their forecast right now, but uh, we still have a larger chunk of our country that is covered in the blue and the purples. And look at this deep cold air. This is stuff that we're used to seeing in the wintertime, January, February. Uh, this is a realistic cold shot that will be here by mid-month and temperatures will continue to remain below average. And not only below average, but for parts of the Northwest and the Northeast, I'm sorry, we're talking about temperatures that are very likely below average. And then here by the 20th of November, we see some kind of stall in the cold air, but still highs in the 30s and 40s for most of the country by the, almost Thanksgiving. So in my opinion, the weather is uh, definitely a little bit colder here this year, a little bit colder than what it was last November. Uh, it's trying to average out at the end of the month. But again, guys, it's so hard to rely on these forecasts after day seven. So this is just an idea of what we could see by the end of November. Thanksgiving time can definitely be very well under freezing temperatures for most of the United States. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us this morning. Please tune in tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time for a full report on the Grand Solar Minimum News update. We hope everyone has a great day, guys. Take care, we'll talk soon. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.